We're going to examine the proposed railroad for Honolulu and look at the problems and some alternatives. Bette Midler said the very idea that the state would sacrifice the most important amenity it has to offer the world, the beauty of its environment, is beyond belief. It would be very expensive to build this train. It would be the largest financial burden and biggest waste of money in the history of Hawaii. And we do not have the tax base to afford it. The rail would be the most expensive train project per capita in U.S. history, costing about $6,000 from each person in the state. And there's been increasing cost estimates. It's going up by the billions. You can see in 2006, 2.7 billion estimated, 2009, 4.6 billion, 2010, 5.3 billion, and who knows where it will end up. Rail projects have a 40% average cost overrun. Honolulu is already the second most expensive city in the country. And our economy faces a lot of other mandatory expenses, especially building new sewers, new water system, repaving the roads, and many other facilities. In addition, we've got debt for union salaries. We've got $8 billion in unfunded pensions, $14 billion in unfunded medical coverage for the state, Recently, Senator Inouye himself warned that even spending $1 billion to fix the sewers would bankrupt the city. And annual rail subsidies would cost at least $70 million if the ridership reaches 116000 daily, which is very unlikely. That means there'll be even higher subsidies, perhaps $100 million every year. This shows how the unfunded government pension liability has been increasing in Hawaii, where it's up to nearly $15,000 now per household. Similar numbers for the city retiree health liability, up to about $6,000 per household. We have many debt obligations. Rail would change the character of our city and island forever. It would block the views, it would damage historic sites, destroy ancient burial grounds, and pave over important farmlands. Here's the view today in Waipahu and if the elevated train is constructed. Another before and after down by Aloha Tower. Huge elevated platforms for the stations. King Street, University Avenue in the next phase huge. It would go over the H1 freeway. And if it were to go into Waikiki as originally planned, it would be a real eyesore that would really disturb our tourism economy. Other cities have been removing their elevated structures rather than putting up new ones. The famous example of the waterfront Embarcadero in San Francisco. Miami is the only other city in the country that has built an elevated rail in recent decades. And here's how it looks. And with rail, we know that traffic congestion will be worse than it is today. It's not going to solve our congestion problem. Here's a graph showing how today about 6% of commuters use the bus transit. And in 2035, with bus and rail, that number would only go up from 6% to 7.6%, more or less. It would only benefit 2% of the island while using 50% of our transportation funds. And our current bus ridership is high, but it could be hurt with the elimination of express routes when the train takes its place. There are many alternatives to building this train that would provide better solutions such as more express buses, improve the roads, create some managed lanes for carpools, van pools, and the express buses. This would be much less expensive and more effective 
and it could be implemented within a few years. Many people think that rail is energy efficient, but in reality it's not. Here's a comparison, for example, of our existing Honolulu bus system, which is very energy efficient compared to other rail systems around the country and is undoubtedly more efficient than a Honolulu train would ever be, showing the increasing energy efficiency of automobiles in the coming decades. They will equal the efficiency of mass transit. There is a great cry for jobs in Hawaii, but the jobs created by the train would be minor. Most Money would be shipped abroad and spent on high technology. Foreign payments for the train will export employment to Italy and other places. And this rail technology requires importing specialized workers. There'd be a net loss of local jobs with this money going overseas. Whereas alternatives would create quality local work, building something useful. And traffic relief, not job creation, is the main justification for transit improvements. The city is rushing right now to build this train. They're being irresponsible to proceed now, issuing $300 million in contracts in the face of lawsuits and the upcoming election. The federal government and Congress have not yet agreed to award the city $1.5 billion for rail, and that might never happen. The city is already starting and preparing to build columns that will have to be torn down later. This is a very unethical situation with the city spending taxpayer money currently on misleading advertising in support of rail. The city is making false statements about rail benefits using public funds against us. The city did the same thing in 2008, spending millions of dollars of your money for deceptive pro-rail ads on TV radio, mailings, and the newspapers, trying to manipulate public opinion. And unions and developers will spend even more with their propaganda claims before the upcoming election. Our Oahu population is just not suitable for rail. Our existing size and low-density housing is spread out to the point where it's not appropriate for a rail system. The rail would rely on people riding a bus from their home to the station. Very few people could walk to the train stations, and most would have to take these time-consuming bus transfers, which could add 10 or more segments to the daily round trip. Getting from your home to the bus stop, ride the bus, get to the train station, ride the train, and do the same at the destination, and the same thing coming home. Metro systems require high-density populations, which we don't have. And the public does not support rail. Major polls have shown that a large majority of Oahu residents oppose this train. Most recently, Civil Beat found 55% opposed to rail, while only 34% support rail. And most of those supporters mistakenly believe rail will reduce congestion below today's levels victims of false advertising. The campaign ahead will see an election for mayor. Many millions of dollars will be spent by the rail forces. Their propaganda will attempt once again to manipulate the public with more distortions and saturating the media with a constant bombardment of false information. The anti-rail efforts will rely on volunteers to win this election. And your participation is needed.